Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mies New Media tutorial we'll be taking a look at how to recover some underexposed footage inside DaVinci Resolve 15 Beta 2. Now a couple caveats with this before we get in, well I'll give you something to look at. This is shot on the Ursa Mini 4.6K in RAW 4 to 1. Uh, you see it is very underexposed. So we're going to be using some RAW options in here to help us out, but we'll also be doing things that can be used with not RAW footage. Whenever footage is this underexposed, it really helps to have more bits per channel. I mean, you could probably still get a lot back with 8-bit footage, but it won't be great. 10 bits, you could probably get away with this pretty well. 12 bits, we're going to make it look pretty okay. It'll be a little noisy, but that's fine. So, the first thing that we're going to do is go over to our RAW tab and change this from Cinema DNG default to Clip. You see, I've already done that. And then we're going to change our white balance from as shot to custom because we're going to need to change that just a little bit on here. This isn't being underexposed. You could still white balance properly and be underexposed. But what was going on here is I just made a brisket and I wanted to send a video uh, about it, but I didn't feel like doing any work. So I didn't put any lights up, turn off clips there so I can see a little better. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got some scopes open over here and let's go over into our primaries wheels. And I'm just going to change the offset and bring it up into the middle. So you can see this looks gross right now, but we're going to expand out our contrast by bringing our lift down to get that back to about the point where we want it and our gain up and move our gamma. And you can see we're getting some fixed pattern noise in here, which we're going to take care of after we get our luminance about where we want it. So this is close. It's still a little dark. So we'll bring the gamma up a little more gain up a little bit more and just keep tweaking these until you get about where you want it to be. I want this, <laughs> the worst part of this is this shot wants to be high key, even though it's underexposed. So I'll say that that's looking pretty good. You see that this is super duper noisy and it's got both normal noise and fixed pattern noise. So we're going to try and take care of that as best we can. Now when dealing with uh, especially fixed pattern noise, it can be really difficult for noise reduction algorithms to take care of it. So a really handy thing to do is notice which part of the frame is really important. So the important part is just this little section right here where the accent's happening, all this other stuff where the noise really comes out, uh, we can do some funny stuff too. So next one we'll do is hit Alt B and that will create a new node, but also you see the cursor has changed into our polygon selection tool. So we can just make a little selection here. This shot doesn't move, so we don't even have to track it that much. I'm just going to mask around these sharp bits. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. And we will go ahead and smooth this out. So let me take the scopes away. And inside and outside. This doesn't need to be super exact. We can change these around just a little bit if we want to. And now we can hit Alt-O to create an outside node. And the outside node takes the inverse of the selection in our previous node. So here's the node that we made with the polygon selection. And then here is the outside node. And in this outside node, what we can do is add just a little bit of lens blur. So that's too much. But if we put it down to something like 2, or maybe even bring it up a little bit to like 2.2, .2, you can see that already gets rid of a lot of this noise. So it's still there. But it's a lot less. And if we bring it up a little bit more, you know, the more you bring it up, the crazier it gets. But you can see this technique is good for just taking the edge off that noise. So I think it's pretty nice. So maybe even 2.3. We'll go hardcore. But the noise is still there. So we'll go back to our previous node. And I'm going to add a node with Alt S. And we're going to do our noise reduction after our primary grade. Just because then it'll make it a little bit easier for resolve to see the noise. And we're going to start this off with the spatial noise reduction. So I'm going to hit Shift H to solo this node. So that bypasses these two nodes. So we're just seeing what's going on here. And now we're going to zoom into a point where there's a lot of noise. I'm going to start off with spatial noise reduction and just always go as good as you can here because especially the difference between faster and better is just huge. I guess this is a tutorial, so I'll show it now. So if I bring this up to 100, you can see this is what faster looks like. Pretty awful. Um, don't use that. This is what better looks like. Oh, that's, you know, starting to look even at 100, just like a cell phone camera. And if we go to enhanced, you know, there's a good little bit of detail left in there. So then we can back this down to a more reasonable level, something like there. You see, we're losing some sharpness, but 
we're losing a lot of noise in there, which is really nice, especially this nasty color noise. So that's already a lot better. And then if we hit Shift H to unsolo this, you can see the blur sort of smooths out a lot of that other stuff. So already that's looking, um, especially for this shot, pretty acceptable because this shot's just going to small screens, so it doesn't super duper matter. And since this shot is mostly fixed pattern noise, the temporal noise reduction won't help us out that much since the noise is pretty similar from frame to frame. So we're just going to be able to use the spatial noise reduction. But if we hit Shift H to bring back our blur, you can see that we're really, we've gotten a long way. So now the next thing that we're going to do is since whenever you're under or overexposed, it sort of compresses the amount of dynamic range that you have to use just because of the way that the color spaces work when we're shooting. We're going to expand out some more localized contrast in here to make it look a little more poppy. So I know that the main light for this scene is a window light coming from over here. So you can see sort of these edge lights on the shiny bit. That is what we're going to enhance. So I'm going to hit Alt S to create a new serial node. Then we're going to create a gradient power window and bring this up just to the side of our frame where our window light is coming through. If we hit Shift H, you can see that this is just affecting this part of our image. So right about there seems good. And now in here, we can bring our gain up even higher and we'll just make this part a lot brighter. I'll have this stretch over our image a bit. And then we can even warm it up a bit. So go over here. You don't need to bunch. Just a little bit to give it some contrast. And then also while we're brightening things up, we can brighten up our middle part here too. So let's bring our gain up some. And since this is where the important stuff is happening, we'll even add a little bit of mid-tone detail. So there we go. So now since we can sort of see what's going on here, we can go back and access our camera raw controls and change our white balance to fit. And you don't have to be in any particular mode whenever you change your camera raw controls because the camera raw processing actually happens before the edit page in the color pipeline. So if we bring our white balance down a little bit and push us towards green a little bit, I think that will get us a pretty accurate representation of what the meat actually looks like. Now this is probably good, but I know that my monitor tends to be a little bit bright, so I want to grade this a little bit brighter. I think it should be. So I'm just going to add a note at the end. and just use this as a little boost to up there. And now that is starting to look about how bright I want it to be. Really nice, bright and fresh looking because food. So you can see before, wow, that is very underexposed. And now after, we've really brought a whole lot back. And a lot of that is because shooting raw and stuff, but also... Um, with the noise reduction and the blurring stuff, you can sort of fake this a little bit, especially the blur will help you out with those uh, banding issues that you'll get in 8-bit footage. So you still got some fixed pattern noise back there. If we really worked on stuff a little bit harder, I'm sure that we could get rid of some more stuff. But like I said, this is a small screen delivery, so this will be totally fine for going to Instagram. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. I hope it helps you out. I know that underexposed footage is something you're going to have to deal with. And this is a good example of why shooting higher bit depths is good, at least for colorists. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Mr. Media YouTube channel. And if you want even more goodness, check out mistymedia.com slash products. You can find all sorts of stuff, LUTs and stock footage and all sorts of goodness. So if we wanted to add a little look LUT after this, we could go and add a LUT from the Swiss LUTs pack right here. See what looks good. If we're going to Instagram, you know, make it look really Instagrammy. That's kind of fun. Put that on and then dial it back a bit. And that'll give it that extra little warmth. Make it look like an Arby's commercial or something. So anyway, once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.